in time a little bit. State of the League address number 11. Got some funky disco music going on. Now let's see, we got the, the trade deadline is over. So no one's really going to have any modifications to their current team except what they find on the waiver wire. So uh, we got some slim pickings and so we're at the point where what you see is really what you're going to get uh, barring major injury and you're lucky to pick someone up who's not really uh, on a roster right 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 now so um, I was looking at the the league and it looks like we've got you know six teams fighting for five spots given that the nomads have already posted uh, have already clinched a playoff spot congratulations to them so we have one uh, one of the spots taken we got five left six players fighting for it anything can happen in these next two weeks we got two games left everybody um, for those of you that are eliminated and it looks like anyone in eighth place or worse, from Pratik all the way down to Moan, um, you guys are most likely, you guys are really eliminated, so it was a good season, um, but at least play for pride and at least keep this thing fun, try and knock somebody out maybe. Um, I wonder if, if we should actually have an incentive next year uh, for punishment for coming in last place. Maybe there's some kind of funky challenge or financial incentive so no one tries and tanks or gets bored and doesn't give a shit and leaves their team empty. Um, so we'll see. We will see. Uh, I want to take a recap of last week's game. Last week's game of the week. It was Pratik, Juicy J. Kaint, Zuckthrow, Scott's Poop. It was 62-61 in favor of Big Mike. Uh, that guy is, I can't believe Big Mike, he's hes a Cinderella story. I'm loving it. But Pratik, you blew it again by picking the wrong quarterback. All you got to do is pick the right quarterback. and That's the third game you've blown. God, I was one of them. Go look it up. He's blown three games because he's picked the wrong quarterback that he could have won. I mean, Mike did have the crazy decision of sitting Trey Mason in, in – favor of uh, Trent Richardson, who's been pretty disappointing all year, touchdown dependent. Uh, so anyway, fatigue's done for the season because of that. So I was rooting for him all year, and uh, hey, shit happens, so you're done. Um, paper bag team of the week, and I don't even know if this is going to fit over my hairdo. I might have to give myself a cut. Hold on. Uh, uh. Oh, never mind. I was uh, I was able to fit my fro under the the bag. So, uh, Moan, uh, were you trying to lose this week? I I understand that your team has mightily struggled this season, but were you trying to set a record for the lowest score? I mean, <laughs> there's no incentive. <laughs> For, for tanking and getting the first overall pick next year, because it doesn't happen. That's not a thing here. Um, let me try and put this into perspective. Um, do you realize that uh, if my entire team consisted of Jonas, Dre Jonas Gray, Jonas fucking Gray, the comedian last week, I would have won? So I had a whole empty roster. I have one guy. He would have beaten your whole team. That is so pathetic. That shouldn't ever happen. I can't believe the, your whole team, one guy could have been your whole team. Oh my God, that's all I want to spend on that. Ugh. Ugh. My dog's chewing my hair. Ugh. How do I look? How do I look? Ugh. Damn, I look good. I might keep this for real. Mm. Just got to perm this morning. That's why it's so poofy. Uh, champ chatter. Um, there was a that interesting rumor we had last week, first reported by field reporter Bruce Weinfer. Um, so we had that that rumor going on, and that news story broke, and uh, it, it looked like uh, Webstar Productions was really going in the tank. But luckily, they put out a very quality show last week. I was really, really, really happy to 
to watch that on Sunday morning. I was really proud. They finally got some good programming after a, a couple, you know, two or three week downers, two week, two or three weeks of downers, excuse me. Um, so I'm pumped for the next show. I'm looking forward to, to what, see what Sam's got for his predictions next week because these are some really important games coming up. So keep up the good work, Sam. Get, an, get another episode just like you had last week. I'm happy about that. Very happy. So let's move on to the waivers. Um, just a couple I really want to mention. I mean, there's really no one to pick up anymore at this point. Some minor adjustments. I don't even know if anyone's going to play. So uh, the now <laughs> infamously named team Poop, because uh, his team looks like Poop, uh, Scott's team, he added uh, Dan Haran or Dan Heron. I don't even know how to pronounce it, but he's the number two running back now in Indianapolis. Uh, so with Ahmad Bradshaw going down, um, I guess he's really the only guy he could have picked. He was banking on Adrian Peterson, which is a horrible idea. It was a good stash, but he had him planned to start. Um, so that wasn't very good. And then in typical fashion, he added uh, Marcus Colston, dropping Kenny Stills because he's on IR. So he's replacing one Saint with another. So half his team still is the New Orleans Saints. Go figure. Um Mike, Zuck throws Scott's poop. He added Jonas Gray. Um, so that 44 points I just mentioned that he had last week, um, that's going to be more than he's going to have the rest of the way. I mean, this reminds me a lot of, for all you Patriots fans out there, Big Mike, you should know better yourself after adding him. And possibly Webster, I don't know if you remember a game, I think last year where LeGarrette Blunt had four rushing touchdowns in a game, and we can see where he is. He just got waved by the Steelers, so... I don't have much confidence in Jonas Gray. I don't think he's going to be a whole lot. Bill Belichick's probably just going to go back to Shane Green or passing, and he, who knows? He's probably only going to get two points next week for all we know. Too much uncertainty there. It's not a great pickup, but I guess it's worth a stash here or just just really to keep him from anyone else getting him. Uh, the Nomads added Kenny Britt in the most cliche ad in fantasy football that can be done. So you've got a guy who doesn't do shit all year. He has really disappointing games, three points, four points. Okay, maybe he had a game where he had eclipsed a 10-point mark. But he finally has a big game for the first time all year. And just like happened, what happened in this fantasy league, you have 50% of probably all fantasy leagues add this guy, only to find out he goes back to his normal ways of getting three catches, 35 yards, three and a half points, and then they're all going to drop him again. Just like the Nomads are going to do. So he's just hoping. I don't know what the point of that move was. Um, he's already got good receivers. Doesn't need them. Don't know why he bothered making a move. But So I'm really only going to give it to one team here. It's going to give it to the Bella Chefs. Added Kobe Fleener because, uh, shit, I don't know what the hell the other guy's name is. I can't think because I didn't write it down or whatever. So... Kobe Fleener is the real only Colt tight end they've got right now, so he's going to get a lot of points, I think. A lot's relative as a tight end. They're a hot commodity at this point. However, he's got Julius Thomas, and I really think it was just a backup at this point because Julius Thomas is questionable with his injury. So he'll probably still play Julius Thomas if he's healthy to go. So waiver pickup of the week I'm giving to the Bella Shifts, and for God's sakes, can he can he end this losing streak he's got? He's lost seven games in a row, and he's about to play Bill Swallows Brady, who um, looks like he's dropped his entire team and added a totally new one. So he doesn't even have players. He's just picking them from, from the garbage bucket, which is the, the free agency list. And um, for God's sakes, Noble, he's putting a W on the table for you, just take it. You've lost seven games in a row, which is unheard of in fantasy football because it's just 50-50, it seems like, almost. I mean, you've got a little bit of a swing here and here, but, man, just for God's sakes, just win a game, please. I'm sick of watching you lose. You started 3-1. and one. You were in first place. Oh, man. Um, so with that, let's just go to the game of the week. Uh, I was actually thinking about picking the t Team Rectum Blasters versus Pembroke who is uh, Pembroke. What's your team nowadays? Um, I smell bacon, because that's who we played last week. was bacon, my uh, Scott's team. So uh, I, that's going to be, you know, the second place game of the week pick. 
Um, but I'm going to go with the, the match for Massachusetts supremacy. It's going to be my team, the Beantown Vagabonds. You like that? Versus Webster's Boston Nomads. Now, I know what all you guys are going to say. Um, Steelers are on a bye, so he's missing Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. I get it. I get it. It's not fair. It's not full strength. But for my team, it's important uh, because it's a statement game because he's in first place, and I really want to knock him down. I don't want him to get that number one seed because right now I'm chasing that number two seed. So I'm going to need some help with Sam to lose, but I'm also going to hope to get this win here uh, because personally I, I'm – I'm looking to need this because I think that win will give me a clinch. Um, I just want to not have to worry about losing this week and then not follow it up with another loss and possibly even miss the playoffs. So I just want to win a little bit of bias with that pick. That's why I'm also giving honor mention to the Rectum Blasters versus Pembroke because that's a big game right there because it's still possible for both of those teams. If they, I think if they both lose out, uh, they could they could be out of the playoffs either one of them. So that whoever loses that matchup between those two um, is really going to have to win the next week. Otherwise, I think they might miss the playoffs. Uh, especially, um, I know Pembroke's been chasing all year, scoring the most points in the league. I don't know how that happens. Well, it's because he's given up the most points. But I'm looking at Zuck's team, uh, the Rectum Blasters. He's eight and three. But if he loses the next two games, it's possible of being in. Uh, third place he could miss the playoffs so a lot can happen we're gonna have to see how this week plays out and uh it's gonna be exciting next week where i'm gonna make some predictions give my uh picks for the playoffs who got the buys who's gonna get the buys i, I should say and uh um yeah that's about it that's all i had planned for everyone so i want to wish everyone a good luck um except for the uh boston nomads because we all know the beantown vagabonds are the real deal the real deal. All right, uh, this is uh, the commissioner signing out. We're going to fill up, uh, finish here with some disco for you guys, some 70s disco, get your groove on, and uh, we'll see you next week.